Yeah, I am going to uh, discuss today on AVF care in hemodialysis patient. Uh, uh, this will go to the history of the vascular access. The first, uh, initially in 1960, the vascular access AV shunt was uh, initiated by Kunder and Scribner. This is followed by, in 1966, the Brescia Simino, the two vascular surgeon, they created the endogenous AV fistula. This is the access of choice for maintenance hemodialysis today. There are other history in the vascular access. This include the graft uh, in the late 1960 and 70, the graft biomaterial, some uh, material, bio material include autogenous saphenous vein, bovine carotid artery, human umbilical vein. And in 1917, synthetic bridge graft, that is PTFE, most frequently used graft today. And in 1979-1980, the catheter, the tunneled catheter, double lumen catheters introduced and usage of surgically implanted catheters used. This is a picture of the surgeon who invented AVF, the Brissetia, Simino, and Apple. This is the most commonly used uh, uh, AV fistula. Uh, this is the uh, uh, anatomical, uh, this is to be created in anatomical step box or in the wrist side of the artery to end of the vein. What are the common vascular access for hemodialysis? Uh, uh, one is the AV fistula, another one is the AV graft and catheters that include femoral, jugular, permacath. What is ideal vascular access for hemodialysis patient? The ideal vascular access which provide high blood flow rate and it can be used instantly without waiting period or without wait for maturation and no, need, uh, no needles because of pain and uh, difficulty in cannulation and all these things. No needles hello, hello. and non-survival period and less complication like thrombosis and infection rate. And patient should be very comfortable with the vascular access and it has minimal cosmetic effect. What is meant for the ideal access? And we have to choose very close to ideal or far from ideal. What is it? And where are we now? And where do we need to go? How are we going hello. to achieve the fistula first? Hello, 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 can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. So please continue. Yeah. This is the, uh, the prevalence of ESRD is increasing and uh, also the number of patients on end-stage renal disease from last few years, we can see that that is increasing, uh, dramatic increase in the number of uh, CKD patients that reach into ESRD. And uh, the initiation of, if you look at the initiation of HD through vascular access, uh, the most of the patient, 80% of patients start HD through the central vein catheter. Only few patients, few percentage of patients, like 16% of patients uh, uses the AV fistula as, as a, for the HD as a beginner. And only 3% of uh, HD patient uses AV graft. If you look at this diagram, you come to know that vascular access use at initiation and on day of eligibility, you look at the from first session also the the graft av fistula use is very less only 10 to 20 percent of patients on av fistula and even if you uh, look at the graph at day 90 also the fistula usage is very less number percentage of patient on fistula usage is very less this is the yellow color that's the av fistula patient and uh, most of the patients are using vascular access catheter is a vascular access for the dialysis The National Kidney Foundation uh, KDQ guideline, the first fistula breakthrough initiative approach. What is the first fistula approach? From It, it has been started from 2003. Uh, the first fistula quality initiative, there are a lot of data from USRDS and Medicare and uh, the, uh, followed by, uh, they used to get a lot of publications of uh, about the clinical practice guideline and a docu guideline also that change the uh, future status of optimizing the vascular access pat pattern, practice pattern. So 
after that in 2003 onwards the uh, increase the number of fistula creation from 26 to 60 percentage and our target and aim is to increase the placement 70 to 80 percentage in prevalent hd patient in us and europe most of the centers achieve more than 90 percentage of heavy fistula first approach and this is the graph showing the uh, uh, previous uh, fistula first approach and post fistula first approach previously av graft were using uh, uh, dramatically that a lot of number of patients number of patients uh, percentage of patients are very high number of uh, patients on av graft around 70 percent of patient and fistula usage was only 20 percent and catheter was also only 10 percentage and after the fistula first start date, you can see that there is an increase in the percentage of patients, those who are started HD through the AV fistula is increased up to 60 percentage. So look at the catheter. Is there, they are benign or uh, we don't know because he, this diagram showing the one of the patient having problem with the catheter, there is a venous hypertension that is a clinical hyper. Uh, abnormality, you can see that that is due to the stenosis of the central vein, more than 50% stenosis. So, catheters are problematic. Lot of problems we can see with catheter and his infection, and uh, patient uh, come, uh, come with a clotting tendency, thrombosis, and central vein thrombosis is a very problematic situation for the dialysis patient. So, if you look at the vascular access for HD patient, AVF is better than AV graft and AV graft is better than catheter because the less chances of infection and thrombosis compared to the AV graft and catheters. So what is AVF? AVF is Achilles heel or what we can say lifeline for hemodialysis patient. It's the commonest form of vascular access for maintaining hemodialysis. So it is the anastomosis creating between the native vein and an artery. So that allow blood flow directly from the artery to vein. They commonly use the non-dominant upper limb. The AV fistula usually require maturation. It's less complication, thrombosis and infection compared to the AV graft and catheters. The patient life is long with uh, AV fistula compared to catheters and graft. So one of the important concepts is it is a continuous circuit. It is not a device or it is not a uh, just a communication. It is a continuous circuit. It start at the heart and end at the heart. The, the heart from the aorta, uh, the blood is reaching it to, uh, to the radial artery. Then from the radial artery, connection to the cephalic vein and back to the uh, venous system of the heart. And so it is a continuous circuit and that create a hyperdynamic circulation in the body, especially in the upper limb. And the, so examination of AV fistula should not be limited to site of the AV access. The examination should be include the remaining part of arm, distal part of hand, shoulder, breast, neck area, and face. What are the advantages of AV fistula? It has a lower risk of infection. The tendency to clot is less and fewer secondary intervention and low hospitalization rate. It allows greater blood flow. The patency of uh, long-term patency of the AV fistula is uh, improved performance with the time, this uh, long-term patency is good and less cost of implantation and maintenance. What are the disadvantages of AVF? It has a tendency to failure of maturation or slow maturation and difficulty in cannulation and needle, and needle prick and increase in size with the age and formation of aneurysm and cosmetic appearance of dilated veins. So vascular access care required a teamwork, need trained, dedicated trained vascular surgeon, dedicated nephrologist, physician, and dedicated dialysis nurse and technician. Also, the investigation side we required a radiologist and an angiography team. When we will create an AVF, whenever CKD patient coming to OPD with follow-up and GFR of less than 30 ml per minute per meter square that patient should be considered for creating AVF. You have to create AVF whenever patient with a GFR less than 30 or when serum creatinine level more than 4 milligram per deciliter persistently or rising uh, creatinine over a period of months when we follow up or within six months to one year of anticipated HD requirement. Patient required 
dialysis within six months to one year. So such a patient, you have to create the AV fistula in advance. In case of CAPD patient or renal transplant patient, in CAPD patient is optional. The hemodialysis is optional because we have an another access for peritoneal dialysis, peritoneal catheter is there. But in the initial period of stabilization, patient required uremia, patient is in uremia and CKD stage five, some weakness, and we have to initiate the dialysis through uh, hemodialysis, start, first start with the hemodialysis uh, 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 during the break-in period, then uh, shifted the patient to the CAPD. And later, whenever patient develop mechanical complication, infection like peritonitis, we, uh, patient need another access for the dialysis uh, because otherwise patient have we have to put again catheter and other uh, infection patient already in infected uh, peritonitis and other complication we have to induce more complicated things with catheter in renal transplant patient those who are waiting list for more than six months and require regular hd you have to uh, consider av fistula creation as for all of you know the vascular anatomy of the upper limb the upper limb, the arterial supply is mainly from the axillary artery. The, the branch of the axillary artery the, uh, is the brachial artery and divide into radial and ulnar and form a deep palmar arch in the hand. And the venous system is the basilic vein drain the medial side of the upper limb and cephalic vein drain the lateral side of the upper limb. This is a diagrammatic representation. You can see the vascular anatomy of the upper limb. And what are the common arteriovenous fistula according to the method of surgical anastomosis? There are types of AVF. Uh, usually we can see the commonest method is the brisatio semino AVF, that is side of artery to end of the vein. And another method is the easy method, side of the artery to side of the vein. Then, uh, uh, sorry, this is the end of the artery to end of uh, side of the vein and end of artery to end of vein. Each type of fistula have different problems. When we, after creation, we can see that there are a lot of problems with the different types of fistula. The side to side anastomosis, what is technically it is easy, but the highest fistula flow. So hyperdynamic, uh, or uh, we can see that the limb hypertrophy, uh, whole upper limb become hypertrophy because of the side to side anastomosis. End to side, that is artery to vein, this is a minimum tur turbulence and distal steel problem because most of the blood flowing from the artery uh, to, towards the distal part of the vein. So that will uh, also uh, create a distal steel and slightly lower fistula flow, but twisting of artery during construction is the pro common problem with the end, end of the artery to a side of a vein. Then end to side, that is the vein to end of the vein uh, uh, to the si side of the artery, that is the Basisio semino uh, fistula. This is the ideal ideal method, but uh, difficult uh, than side to side to create and decrease turbulence, highest venous flow rate, minimal venous hypertension. End to end is the problem. Is end to end is the uh, end to end arterial venous connection. So least starting in steel, but venous hypertension is less. The lowest flow to the four configuration in the uh, these uh, types of fistula. According to the site uh, in the upper limb or other sites in the upper limb, the forearms AV fistula, radial artery to cephalic vein connection and connection between radial artery to basilic vein and radial artery to any other transposition. In the arm fistula, brachial artery to cephalic vein, brachial artery to basilic vein or any other transposition in brachial artery. There are rare sites for AVF anastomosis that include ulnar basilic, and in the uh, in uh, upper limbs are not uh, able to create fistula. We can go for the thigh femoral vein transposition. Sometimes we can take femoral vein from the th thigh and uh, transpose to the brachial axis also. And another uh, common thing we can do is the brachial artery to anticubital vein that is a duped graft. So these are the uh, diagrammatic uh, picture showing the radiocephalic fistula. This is the commonest site we used to create. First uh, preference is the radiocephalic. Then next is the brachiocephalic. If the patient have failure or difficulty in uh, get, creating the fistula on the radial uh, radiocephalic, we can create the brachiocephalic, especially in elderly age group or poor uh, arteries like atherosclerotic diseases. We can create uh, initial stage, we can create brachiocephalic. Don't wait for radiocephalic to immature or 
other problems to develop. Then another uh, fistula we can use uh, those who are not able to uh, do the brachiocephalic, we can do the brachiobasilic. This is something more complicated surgical technique because, because it will take two steps of surgery. Initially, there is a communication, then the basilic vein is, uh, is going deep to the t uh, muscles. So we have to be superficialized the uh, uh, basilic vein for cannulation. Otherwise, very difficult to cannulate because it is going underneath the muscle. So we have to uh, do a surgical technique should be uh, would be uh, difficult in this situation. So these are the types of fistula, brachiocephalic and radiocephalic, brachiobasilic type of fistula. We can see this is radiocephalic. So these are the another access we can use brach brachial access with the femoral vein. Femoral vein taken from the thigh, then we can anastomosis to the brachial artery. It's also a femoral vein transposition. So what are the problems with the fistula? The one is the primary failure rate, the thrombo due to thrombosis or failure to mature at six weeks. The percentage wise, we can uh, up to 10 to uh, 20 percentage of patient develop the primary failure rate. And the primary patency rate at one year of follow-up is around 70 percentage for the fistula. It's a high primary failure rate and moderate patency rate for one year follow-up for the fistula. So uh, we have to, uh, uh, whenever we are planning to create a fistula, we have to think about the preservation of vein for hemodialysis uh, CKD patients. Uh, the patient is on CKD, they are, uh, whether they are on dialysis or not on dialysis, we have to keep the uh, uh, arm of dorsum of the hand uh, free from venipuncture and IV infusion and also rotate venipuncture side. I don't allow uh, thrombophlebitis to come up, come to the vein or uh, use a manual blood pressure device do not use cephalic vein either arm for blood draw and IV fluid therapy or drug infusion. And do not place a subclavian catheter or quick line. In spite, we can use the jugular, jugular line because all these things damage the vein, cephalic vein and uh, thrombophlebitis and difficult to create fistula in future. So vein preservation is one of the important thing all of you keep in mind before, uh, before going for uh, uh, creating fistula. Then other preoperative preparation include patient consent. We can take uh, and always uh, preferably we have to do the AV fistula on the non-dominant arm because the dominant arm we have to use for uh, uh, our routine normal activities, uh, writing and other things. And we, uh, we have to uh, keep non-dominant side. Uh, uh, the reduction of uh, non-maturing and using find out the optimal vessel selection by using Doppler study, ultrasound study, and find out the vein and artery. The size of the artery is important. Size of the vein is important. And also, uh, 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 patency of the palmar arch uh, using Allen's test. That will create, uh, it comes to know that the palmar arch is patent. The radial and alda arteries that are not diseased or no atherosclerosis disease is there. Or there should not be a diff pressure, pressure difference, should not be more than 20 millimeter of mercury between the arms. These are problematic situations. So we have to keep these key uh, points in mind before uh, taking the patient for fistula. So I am not going to discuss about the surgical aspects and already told the anastomosis type and all these things. I'm not going to discuss about the surgical procedure in this situation because of lack of time we are going with the post-operative care so after the surgery uh, the things should monitor fistula we should keep clean and dry and always advise the patient to take rest and medicine as prescribed by the vascular surgeon or the surgical side and antiplatelet drug especially we have to they have to continue to prevent the clotting and thrombosis and notify the surgeon office if there is any bleeding tendency or hematoma or fluid collection occurs. <coughs> Always monitor color and warmth of fingers on fistula hand should be in the same as on other hands. So sometimes what happened, there would be a problem with the uh, uh, athero, uh, embolic and all, all these things. So we have to uh, monitor the color, any changes in the bluish 
discoloration or temperature changes. So there is some ischemic changes or in the hand we have to monitor. Also look at the temperature numbness of hand. Sometimes small nerve endings, small, small nerves injuries can happen during the procedure. So patient always say complaints of uh, numbness and uh, uh, difficulty in moving the uh, fingers and all these things. So we have to <coughs> keep in mind all these things. And if there is an increase in pain, always uh, take care of the uh, 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 what is the cause of the pain and uh, decrease the solution to how to uh, solve the pain. Always monitor BP and hydration, hydration status to prevent excess clotting. Elevate the excess arm to minimize edema and swelling. So uh, after the postoperative care, the after the first day, we can keep on continuous education to the patient. Like uh, after uh, once the wound is getting better and uh, suture is not removed, but after one week, we can say keep fingers continuous moving fingers and use soft ball to encourage vein development. And always tell to the patient check fistula every morning and evening for thrill and brewing. So patient can uh, feel the buzzing sensation over the fistula and hold an asthma side to ear and listen for the buzz. And during, whenever patient come for, those who are coming for dialysis and dialysis staff should supervise or observe them or demonstrate the proper exercise procedures. Then also anger that patient is still continuing or exercise. So discuss with the patient relatives and bystander about their doing or not. So patient should do continuous exercise to develop, mature the fistula. So examine the fistula weekly for signs of proper maturation. So what are the nurses should do? Check the thrill every time whenever patient come for dialysis. Then some give some tips to the patient. Some patient come with a watch on the fistula. We used to see in dialysis unit, some come with putting bangles and all these things. So avoid tight clothing, avoid watch, uh, watch and jewelry, avoid carrying heavy object, avoid exposure to extremes of heat and cold, and avoid mesh measurement of blood pressure on that uh, fistula arm, or avoid venipuncture, IV drug, or also patient used to sleep. This is the commonest problem we used to see, the problem with the uh, patient used to sleep on the excess arm and next day they come, fistula is not working. It's an accidental closure of fistula. We used to see a lot of patients comes with it. So better uh, 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 repeatedly we used to tell clearly that sleeping on the excess arm that will close your fistula. So we have to monitor regularly and use the exercise only for dialysis. Also wash the exercise with soap and water to prevent infection. And always look at the sign of infection like pain, swelling, redness, then absence of thrill or brewy. Report to the dialysis unit immediately. The fistula need to mature required six to eight weeks and maximum ideally of more than 12 weeks it's required. Then after two weeks, we have to teach again patient fistula exercise again and again. We can do after the stitch removal we can advise them to do the isometric exercise that is against the, uh, we have to use ball or some uh, machineries are available to make a fist, fisting of the hand and that will create isometric exercise and this will develop enlargement of the vein by increasing the flow and build the muscles below to make the vein more prominent. And also we can use, it, use a light tourniquet or opposite hand to help encourage the vein with exercise. And folding exercise we can do, uh, just put a tourniquet with our opposite hand, we can uh, do the exercise, then that will encourage the vein. Then always ensure the patient is doing exercise at least four times a day for five to 10 minutes or a day or more. And some senders advise fistula hand exercise before creating a V fistula. So, uh, uh, before a fistula is placed and help the fistula mature after placement. So how to know fistula mature, maturity characteristics. So if you look at the si vessel size that is increasing, 
from initially from 2 mm then increased to 4 mm and 6 mm and always palpate the fistula site so we can feel like it's a firm and springy so adequate dilatation of the vessel and if you put a hand over the uh, over the fistula we'll feel that the thrill is stronger and blue is continuous and low pitch on auscultation and what are the causes of non-development due to disease vessel, mainly atherosclerotic diseases or poor cardiac output status and um, communication of accessory veins. This will uh, uh, problem with the non-development of the fistula or sometimes surgical anastomosis, dexter anastomosis stenosis of fistula. These are the common problem uh, for the immature fistula. Immature fistula. But this is a, a diagrammatic representation of mature AV fistula can be cannulated for hemodialysis. We can see clearly the firm uh, and uh, springy and all this uh, consistency dilated veins you can see. So what is uh, adequate flow? Uh, the flow should be uh, excess flow 100 ml per minute more of dialysis flow rate. If a dialysis flow rate of 300, the excess flow rate should be uh, at least 400, uh, 500 would be, uh, uh, we can think. The international variation in the flow rate, uh, the uh, blood flow rate of in USA is uh, keeping flow rate of 400 and in Europe, uh, 300 ml per minute, in Japan, 200 ml per minute. And we are following the European standard that is 300 ml per minute blood flow we are keeping. Then always check the wall thickening, adequate wall thickening and adequate location. So what are the rules? Success, rule of success for the fistula maturation is greater than, the fistula flow should be greater than 600 ml per minute and diameter of the vein six, greater than six, 6 mm and it is less than 6 mm from the skin surface and all fistula should be thoroughly examined no later than 6 weeks post-op and is there at least 6 cm of vein to cannulate. More than 6 cm length of the fistula to cannulate. So, next I'm going to the cannulation phase. Cannulation is one of the primary causes of ADF failure and sequence of needle puncture into the vessel wall lead to endothelial injury that uh, then uh, that causes leukocyte adhesion and smooth muscle proliferation and uh, hypertrophy, thickening of the vessel wall then lead to venous stenosis, the main cause of access failure. The other problems with the needle in, in, induce is the infiltration, aneurysm formation and hematoma and needle vessel injury. What are the precautions to be taken? Standard precautions, hand washing, eye protection, mask and gloves. Then also look at the fistula and feel and auscultate skin preparation, use the, uh, wash the fistula uh, hand with the soap and water before dialysis session clean with a 2% two, two chlorhexidine gluconate solution with alcohol and followed by a povidone iodine solution uh, using circular motion. Leave the solution to dry and prior to needle insertion. Do not touch the skin after cleaning. This is a diagrammatic representation. We can do the first cleaning with chlorhexidine solution and wait for uh, one to two minutes, then apply for povidone iodine in a circular motion and wait two minutes before proceeding then do not touch skin after cleaning the area. In some center, use local anesthesia because patient has a fear uh, of pain. So uh, topical anesthesia, some center use, some center use, some uh, injectable uh, lignocaine we can also use in initial period of fistula cannulation. The needle type, two main types of needle are available, one metal needle and plastic needle. This is a uh, needle, all of you know that, uh, what are the uh, uh, parts of, what are the uh, needle has as a wing, as a hub, and a shaft, and the tip. The tip here has a bevel edge tip, and it has a back eye on, on the posterior aspects. This is uh, the uh, lower side, you can see the plastic needle. This is the uh, plastic needle available to cannulate the fistula. Uh, when we were in your training period, we used to use this type of plastic needle for uh, study purpose. And uh, this is a good thing we have done uh, with the plastic needle cannulation. The, this is the commonly used the uh, fistula needle, metal needle. 
what are the general rules for cannulation the initial cannulation will be a sharp metal needle metal needle will be either with a sharp or blunt blunt level sorry uh, there are two techniques the you know, common technique are rope ladder technique and button hole technique the plastic cannula can be left in a vessel for a period to time to develop button hole tunnel track the sharp needle used for the rope ladder technique blunt needle used for the button hole technique the difference between the sharp needle is a sharp cutting edge on the tip and the blunt needle has the rounded on the top it is a being color indicate the needle diameter the gauge of the needle the different colors the yellow and uh, orange or green or something like that 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 will indicate the gauge of the needle the black and red dot indicate the position of needle even during the treatment so if you look at the needle length length of the needle metal needles are small compared to the plastic cannula metal needle the size is vary from 1.5 cm to 2.5 cm the plastic cannula the length is uh, uh, 3.3 to 4 cm which is usually used for deep av fistula cannulation this is the needle uh, difference of sharp and blunt needle you can see the uh, sharp needle as a tip is very sharp uh, and the blunt is very uh, rounded tip and uh, it is should not be and is thick the difference between the metal and the plastic needle metal needle in cannulation is easy and uh, miss cannulation is low the cost is low but the problem is injury to the vessel is higher and higher risk of infiltration and the limited area of cannulation and patient is less comfortable with the metal needle and not suitable for deep avf cannulation plastic needle the cannulation it would be difficult but the uh, cannulation would be difficult and higher cost and vessel injury and patient comfortability and is suitable for deep av fistula cannulation the needle site selection that is the placement of needle the needle placed if the needles in the same direction if you cannulate the needle in the same direction it should be keep around 1.5 to 2 inches apart or 4 to 5 cm apart half to half and if the needles are in the opposite direction it should keep the needle in 1 inch is 1 inch uh, is enough to uh, uh, get a adequate blood flow uh, when patient, uh, when the needles are in opposite direction the insertion site or needle tip once inserted it should be 4 to 5 cm away from the anastomosis this is the difference what i show the needle is very if the needle uh, approach if the two needles one is in the uh, two direction arterial needle in this direction and venous needle in this direction the the space required is only 1 inch is required in this case because there is no recirculation can we have enough space in the Uh, way in, inside the vessel we can see that three if you keep 1 inch uh, above we can see that three inches apart space we can get in, inside the vessel if you keep two needle close together and in same direction the the recirculation chance is very high so the same same 1 inch we can get inside the vessel also so be careful keep the uh, distance and all these things during cannulation and venous needle pointing in the direction of the blood flow arterial needle pointing towards arterial anastomosis venous needle must point towards the venous return and arterial needle may point in any direction there there there, there will not be any problem in some cases difficult in the arterial needle it may, may not recurred in the in the uh, uh, anastomosis site so sometime we can use ultrasound mapping for depth and size so uh, next is the size of the needle selection usually initial period we used to use 17 kg needle for the first attempt uh, for one week with two needle cannulation without complication once patient is okay with the uh, 17 kg and we can upgrade it and flow is adequate fistula is okay so we can upgrade it into uh, the uh, 16 kg needle so we will get adequate blood flow of 300 to 350 ml per minute so in our our place we used to initial cannulation with 17 gauge and then shifted to the 17 16 gauge needle during choice the needle size must follow through the two is to one rule that is arterial venous pressure should not exceed 50 percentage of the pump speed 
if the patient uh, if the blood pump speed is around 300 ml per minute the artery and venous pressure should be uh, minus 150 and plus 100 mm of mercury respectively and don't allow the venous pressure and artery should not exceed uh, according to the uh, if it is a 150 or 150 it should not be less than 150 or more than 150 something like that this if it is go ahead then uh, that will uh, damage to the vascular axis we can see there is a back eye on the needle the arterial needle should always have a back eye it should be very smooth flat so that its rim does not cut into the vessel during needle insertion or withdrawal what or what are the important points this will maximize the flow from the excess so it prevents suction of needle into the inner vessel wall and reduce need of rotating the needle so you can see this is the back eye of the needle the fistula needle has a back eye so the blood uh, you can uh, this is incre increase blood intake into the artery this allow blood to be uh, enter or exit from both the bevel and back eye would be very high so uh, arterial needle always required back eye venous needle doesn't require back eye there is there will not be any problem with the uh, flow a position of bevel position or flipping of needle the angle of insertion is very important you have to the insertion angle is 20 to 35 degree depending on the vein depth retrograde direction of arterial needle and bevel down cannulation increase the possibility of access failure if the bevel down position that will injure more injury to the uh, vessel wall and posteriorly sometimes it can let go ahead uh, through the uh, vessel and uh, sometimes communication with the another vessel and recreation of pseudo aneurysm formation and all this we can see and the great direction of arterial needle with developed cannulation may improve the access survival avoid flipping of the needle if uh, there is a uh, that will create coring of vessel if flipping is essential as in case of increased needle pressure must be done carefully to avoid damage to the access this is the bevel down position and bevel up position bevel up is the correct position and we can uh, save the fistula and bevel down cannulation we that we are you are injuring the vessel wall posteriorly that create uh, uh, multiple injuries and uh, thrombosis of fistula and failure of fistula is high in such situation so wet needle we needle should be kept ready with a saline uh, with and syringe and the techniques of uh, uh, cannulation three point technique use the tourniquet should be mand mand mandatory and stabilize the vessel with the two uh, the, 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 the two fingers then pull the skin taut towards the cannulator to allow easier can needle insertion and compress nerve endings and blocking pain sensation to the brain for about 20 second with this technique the another technique is the l technique is the hold thumb and index finger as an l thumb hold skin taut over the fistula index finger stabilizes and encourages the fistula so very easy to cannulate in this technique and after a cannulation we can use a uh, 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 adhesive taping bandage over the fistula and number of attempt better to use the portable ultrasound if available for the assessment of needle position at vein at depth and diameter if cannulation is failed or infiltration occurs call the cannulator or clinical educator don't push saline or blood if unable to aspirate the blood from the needle if doubt that needle has infiltrate remove the needle to decrease the vessel damage and apply ice if patient already receive heparin leave the needle in place and apply ice and give protamine sulfate consider resting the access until infiltration bruising, bruising has improved follow unit policy the addition attempt must be done by an expert cannulator if the dialysis is a life saving and better use single needle dialysis when available that is one one we can use the fistula and another one through the catheter if patient have uh, one catheter uh, uh, the catheter with a uh, one uh, potis patent securing of needle needle should be secured at the same angle of insertion to avoid changing the needle position and minimize the risk of infiltration it also should be secured during treatment to avoid accidental malposition or dislodgement of needle access limb and connection should be visible at all times and should not be covered with blankets removal of needle and achieving hemostasis needle should be removed at the same angle of insertion do not apply pressure while the needle is in the vein 
Once needle is completely removed, use two digits techniques, one finger at the skin level and one at the vein level for maximum hemostasis. And dispose of the needle, follow the occupation health, uh, health, health, health standard, make pressure at least for 10 minutes without releasing pressure. During applying pressure, ensure a thrill can be felt in the muscular axis. So if thrill cannot be felt, remove the hand slowly and assess the thrill. When one thrill is getting, so that is the pressure required. Do not occlude the vascular axis completely. What are the troubleshootings and needle placement and increase and venous pressure and arterial pressure? So in this situation, we have to decrease the pump, blood pump speed and measure the blood pressure and review the previous clinical records and determine the baseline BP and venous pressure, arterial pressure and flow rate. Assess the thrill and brewery and observe for infiltration. The infiltration that is swelling around the uh, cannulation site. Then care, you have to carefully reposition the excess limb. If a, a ultrasound available, use a portable ultrasound to check the position of needle prior to reposition or adjusting needle if, if ultrasound is available. Or otherwise, we can, you, without ultrasound, we can adjust the needle. Carefully adjust the tape or place a small gauze under the needle wings by closely monitoring venous and arterial pressure. If successful, secure needle in position with tape while monitoring venous and arterial pressure. In case of unsuccessful, recirculation the patient blood and recheck the needle position with portable ultrasound. If reposition is unsuccessful, remove the fistula needle. And before recannulation, re recannulation, ask help for a clinical educated nurse. A repeat clinical assessment of AV access like monitoring the thrill, RUI, and portable ultrasound prior for, to repeating the cannulation. Better to avoid repeat cannulation if patient is unsuccessful uh, procedure. There are differences in the techniques of cannulation. The common two, uh, most common two techniques are side rotation technique and button hole technique. The side rotation technique known as warp ladder or rotating side, button hole, constant side technique or same side uh, cannulation. First up, we'll go for rope ladder cannulation. Cannulation site are rotated up and down for the AVF to use to entire length of the uh, uh, vessel with the equal distribution of the puncture site. This is the classic technique used in most dialysis center. Cannulation in straight line at least one to two centimeter for each cannulation site. No need to straighten out by pulling on the vessel to cannulate. The vessel will retract into the original position when released and lead to infiltration. Each treatment requires two new sites. And disadvantages of this uh, is small dilatation, very small dilatation over the whole fistula, concern of one site itis. Advantage of the, uh, uh, this technique is uh, lower rate of infection, expand the lifespan of fistula, and changing cannulation site gives the previous needle site time to heal and decrease the chance of formation of aneurysm. It is thought rope ladder uh, needle reduces the risk of stenosis also. This is the typical uh, rope ladder techniques we can use in uh, practice. This is a venous site rotation, cannulation site. We can see the difference uh, one centimeter apart. You can cannulate in different, different uh, times. In arterial site also rotation, cannulation. Uh, this is the wrong method. It's the poor venous site rotation, poor arterial rotation. This will create problem to the patient fistula. So another is buttonhole technique method, which in which the individual cannulate the AV fistula in the exact same spot, same angle, and same depth of penetration every time. So this is the technique the same person has to penetrate. And after a, a, about 10 cannulation using sharp dialysis needle, the buttonhole site will develop a scar tunnel track. After the button hole is created, a blunt dialysis needle should be used, which eliminated the risk of cut and bleeding into the tract. This is the demonstration of the button hole sites. You can see in our dialysis units, most commonly used by our, our uh, dialysis nurses and patients also very happy with this technique because of they want to cannulate on the same site and uh, staff also, uh, this is easier technique, so easy to cannulate. But what are the advantages? 
may prolong avf life life span reduce needle needling attempt reduces pain reduces bleeding and hematoma reduces infiltration reduces aneurysm formation and promote self care and self dialysis use blunt needle in case of this button hole technique which require no safety device there are disadvantages of uh, button hole technique require same cannulator same angle same location and higher rate of infection and difficult uh, with the fistula covered by heavy scar skin and large amount of subcutaneous tissue what are the indication for button hole technique and indication for rope ladder technique the button hole technique indication avf if there is a short avf in length and it has a short usable segment so use button hole technique and those who have tortuous anatomy of the avf with the tortuous anatomy and aneurysmal dilatation and avf is difficult to cannulate and patient preference and needle phobia in all these cases button hole technique would be better and indication to rope ladder technique include avf is relatively straight and uh, patient has a hand tremors and very difficult to visualize the button hole site so these cases use the rope ladder technique or patient develop complication with the button button hole technique like multiple tract within the button hole once uh, this is uh, uh, our center uh, experiences uh, and pictures of our center's mature fistula and uh, one fistula failed and the second fistula uh, we can see the second fistula here created in the uh, just above the uh, uh, first fistula and uh, these are the uh, dialysis uh, doing with cannulation with the uh, uh, patient is uh, this arterial line and this venous line in this is a difficult case we are putting uh, two needle upwards and uh, these are the problematic fistula here poor flow then we can see that this will create a recirculation more recirculation to the patient but there is no other choice to this patient so we are doing this technique and uh, this is the another patient doing the uh, hemodialysis with a uh, uh, brachiocephalic uh, fistula then uh, uh, this the uh, one patient who, uh, who has a transposed uh, brachiobasilic vein and he is doing this, uh, dialysis through the brachiobasilic and another patient is a rare rare fistula that is ulnar basilic is a we have three patient of ulnar basilic fistula uh, so they are uh, uh, then three patient of ulnar basilic this uh, problem is we have to keep the hand uh, folding the hand and towards the patient and the uh, cannulation should be very uh, would be uh, difficult in this case but uh, we, we are uh, uh, doing dialysis for three patients this is another patient have problem there is a venous hypertension due to previous uh, uh, vein stenosis the jugular catheterization and uh, uh, we can see that uh, there is a, 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 a swelling of the right upper lip compared to the left upper lip so this is a monitor showing the arterial and venous pressure monitoring this is the that patient uh, venous uh, central vein stenosis patient uh, she has the problem with the flow venous flow then the other patients uh, we can see the flow is uniformity we can see the arterial and venous pressure are uniform so the initiation hd initiation data from our center most of the patients the di dialysis through the uh, catheters and 65% of patients are starting dialysis through internal jugular catheter and 25% uh, is uh, uh, initiation of through the femoral catheter the femoral catheter initiation do those patients on serious condition like fluid overload chest infection and non cooperative because of fear and neck stiffness uh, difficult to cannulate and uh, hd initiation through av fistula is only 10% and initiate through permaka zero zero patients none of the patient uh, can initiate it through permaka and if you look at the main hemodialysis the fistula usage the 86% of patients on main hemodialysis through the av fistula only uh, only 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 12% of patients through permaka those patient avf is not possible poor artery and vein or multiple failures of av fistula AV graft usage is to only two percentage. If you look at the primary AV failure rate is five to ten percentage, the patients have 
atherosclerotic arteries and poor vein these are the patient in our sedes we used to see and secondary avf failure rate is used to see 10 to 15 percentage like due to thrombosis and stenosis and infection rate is around 2 to 3 percentage so what is take uh, echo message from uh, this topic discussion is patient education is very important stages of ckd explain the stages of ckd and the dialysis initiation and all modalities of rrp should be explained and educated to the patient and ckd patient all ckd patient vein preservation is very important for uh, creation of av fistula and patient preparation and uh, whenever the AV, uh, preparation for AV, avf when gfr less than 30 percentage or progression to ckd and refer early to our uh, avf surgeon and discuss the difficult cases and post operative patient education is very important and for the avf care and exercise for the avf avf wait till maturation of avf for initiation of cannulation follow universal assertive precaution to avoid infection of av fistula educate our dialysis nurses and technician about cannulation technique and care of avf in the hd unit and ideal cannulation good blood flow adequate hd improve the quality of life of hd patient and improve the life span of the hemodialysis ckd patients and proper anticoagulation to prevent clotting and thrombosis and bleeding extra or special care for difficult cases thank you